So now that I've exported out of Houdini, I just need to bring it in and replace these rain temps. So I just turn that off and I literally just took the Alembic and dragged it into the scene and it just gave me my sequence. And I'm just turning that on. And since I exported out uh, some fields, I get, you know, some velocity. And you can use that to feed into the motion blur of the Redshift uh, object tag. So it's asking for X, Y, Z, and you'll get three. Uh, it's like zero, one, two. And then, you know, I just changed the scale. And then, you know, I just added a, a, a smoothness to it. Because again, you know, it is smooth, but I wanted it even smoother than this. I just added the shader that I've already created because I knew what it would look like. And that's pretty much it. So, you know, once that's set, I just had to uh, bring this in, make sure everything looked right. And once that was all together, I just, you know, quickly scrub through, make sure it felt right. That was pretty much it. So now I just would go, you know, one quick test just to make sure, because this is the, you know, the test scene of the, the temp rain. And then I would just have, you know, the scene calculate and there you go so you know i have my rain it's all set up properly it's in the scene and it will fall down i have my depth of field i have the lighting i want all my textures work and now really the biggest thing is just making sure that i have my uh render settings so that's going to be the next thing so it's really really simple what i what i have in this to be perfectly honest um i just have automatic on um you could go into your standard settings, which would be, you know, for your final renders. So I've just done overrides and made sure my refraction was really high and everything else was 2048. Um, it's 256 um, because of the depth of field. I have my motion blur enabled. Um, I just changed the efficiency a little bit. Um, globally, I actually didn't change of reflection or fraction or combined i could to maybe get a little bit more out of those um water droplets but it was okay um my trace step was four i have irradiance on but i would just put it to brute force um you go maybe 256 or something like that um, and then everything else was pretty much the same aovs is what i sort of changed so i enabled that and in here I basically have set up a few. So I have my beauty and then I have a uh, spec reflection, refraction, and a few puzzle mats. And these were so I could hit certain things specifically. I even have a mat that I created myself and the diffuse filter because um, I was playing around with uh, the optics noise and stuff like that just to see. But I knew I was going to go into After Effects and then use neat video so I didn't have to really worry about that. And then once I was good, I just set it to my path and set the frames and rendered. Okay, so now that we have, you know, everything rendered out from 3D, it's just time to put together the actual After Effects call. So this is the final that I actually have. I'm just going to walk through the layers bit by bit, and then you can just sort of see, you know, it really wasn't that complicated. There's not that many layers. Um, when you think of a comp, this is quite simple to be perfectly honest. And I'm just using uh, one EXR and then just splitting it out. So we'll just go through it. So the first thing is I have my beauty and I'm just gonna turn off everything. And this is it rendered out as ASUS CG. And I'm just gonna add in the adjustment layer with open color IO and setting it to linear sRGB color profile and uh, lock that. I'm not going to turn on these effects just yet. It, it will make sense in a bit why. So I have my, again, extractor. So if I was to show you this pass, it's just the reflections. I'm just picking layers, reflections. And it's set to add, and it was 50%, but you can go up to 100, and you can see it's just all the hits. The other thing was the specular. I'm going to turn this off. So the specular, you know, can hit everything as well. It's set to add. It was at 30%, but this is at, well, 100%. You can see all the details it's doing, and that's you know based on the lighting in the HDR. And then I have a puzzle mat. So I'm basically trying to just hit these two elements. And then I'm using this as an alpha mat. So I'm only hitting right now the branch and the leaf. 
So that plus the reflections gives you this. Then I'll add the beauty as well. So you can sort of see I'm just bringing in some more of the glints, making it more slick and things like that. So then next I have a um, curves on the leaves, which is basically I have a mat and I'm just masking just that part of it. And then using that to basically make it a little deeper. That was the big thing. I wanted to just get this to feel like a really rich, lush, rainy day. And then the next is I have a puzzle mat, which is just for the frog, not even the eye, just for the frog itself. And I have a Lumetri color wheel, which if I turn on, you'll see darkens and changes it to be all green. So this is just taking out most of the yellow from the scene and pushing in some more green. And that's mostly done in some of the midtones. And then I have another Lumetri, which I'm just doing with the curve, bringing it up a bit. And bringing some of this, uh, the dark down and adding some contrast. All of this again is purely just to make this as rainy as possible or as wet feeling as possible. And then I have the center brightness, which is just me with an exposure. I'm just bringing up the center. You know, this is me trying to create a vignette. So you're just focused right on the frog. I have a glow that's overall just hitting everything. And you can see this is deep glow. It's just something you'd have to purchase, but I highly recommend this is probably one of my favorite glows that you can get from After Effects. And there's a bit of chromatic aberration now just everywhere. Now, if I go back to my beauty, what I'm doing is since it's so bright, I'm essentially darkening my beauty down to offset that. So I have a curves, I'm just bringing things down, and then I have a levels. This makes things deeper, so it just brings it back in that range. I also have a mat here, which was black and white, and I just made this myself as a separate AOV. Again, using the extractor, and all I have on this is a saturation increase using a hue saturation just changing the hue just ever so slightly of the red part. And I have a pre-comp here, which is essentially just me adding in more of the rain uh, specular and refractions. So that way, or re reflections, refractions. So I'm just trying to bump that up even more. And then I just have some mats, so I'm only picking the inside of the um, rain. And then also I have one for the frog itself. And then with that, it just brings in some more hits, some more glints. And again, I'm putting deep glow on this just to bring it up ever so slightly. And it's adding, you know, some more coloration. And, you know, it's just these small minor things that really help bring this together. And then I have a curves. And again, with this one, I just don't have it hitting this area up top. So it's just subtracting from that. When I bring this in, you can see it's just brightening everything below. So I was just trying to equalize out because these are getting really hot. And then I wanted those to get hot as well. And then when I turn them all on together, I also have a grain that's, you know, just set to sharpen. And it's just a little bit to break up some of the feeling of it being too CG. And that's pretty much the whole set. So again, you know, thanks for, you know, watching. And I hope you've learned a few different things about this. Uh, set up and build in you know just what you can do with a few different programs and again if you haven't watched the short film shine i definitely recommend you know check it out leave a comment let me know what you think and hopefully you get to see what you guys make so thanks again and see you on the next one